Hi, everyone. Um, in my previous presentation, I discussed uh, about mineral liberation. In this one, I'm going a little bit more depth into uh, crushes and their funda fundamentals. So let's just uh, jump into it. So in a crusher, you've, there's basically a couple of things. As you can see here, I've got a picture of a um, the, 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 the concave and the, the, the mantle in the middle. And so the feed material comes in here, so it's got almost a gyratory type of a motion that's happening here. And the closest the, 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 the mantle is to the concave, that is the, called the clo uh, sorry, that's the open side setting, so the, basically the rock's falling through there. On the other side, where it's the closest, is called the closed side setting. And that change in motion is called the throw. Then the other thing to consider is that in particles, in a lot of it, is you've got uh, rocks um, being pushed by plates in a lot of crushing applications. And then, of course, there is interparticle crushing, and that is where it's, it's rock on rock. So I just want you to remember these terms because uh, that is important in terms of uh, the, one of the mechanisms, and, and actual fact, one of the better mechanisms of uh, crushing is actually interparticle crushing. Um, sometimes you don't want it, but it is the case. And then uh, when you look at a crusher, it's each case I must mention is actually... Um, fairly unique so yeah so it'll be this determined by the feed size the crushing rate the presence of clays on tramp metal feed wet or dry downstream processes you know is there something further that has to happen um, is it an open or closed circuit and often that is into relationship because often you need a very a narrow size gradient, a lot of these devices give a fairly wide um, size distribution of products. And then the use of surge bins and feeders. And yeah, I must mention here is that having a surge bin in a, a here of a crusher is almost an absolute must. Um, costs money, but it's certainly worth it once you're in operation. Then, um, just as a, as a broad outline, this and please don't use this as a oh, but this table says this is the, the, the capacity. Always uh, test the all and verify uh, with a supply. This just gives you a broad outline. I mean, sometimes a, uh, a, a crusher that is term, determined here as a tertiary crusher can be used in a primary crushing role. For argument's sake, a high pressure rolls crusher can actually be used in a primary and even a secondary crushing role. So just as an example. Um, but just let's go, go through to gyratory crushers. Probably your big boy on a um, operation and uh, we will discuss that in further detail but as you can see it has um, a fairly uh, large capacity and and you can see that the types of rocks I mean it's a one and a half meter rocks that can go into this um, device now the next one is the jaw crusher is also often used as a um, primary crushing device you can see that the feed size is very comparable to that of a um, gyratory crusher, but you can see the capacities of a gyratory is over 1200 and a jaw crusher is up to 1600. So often when you've got large rocks, but you've got a lower capacity or re capacity requirement, the jaw crushers can be often your better bet and uh, uh, better what you want. Now, the next uh, crusher is a uh, horizontal impact crusher. It uses an impact uh, crushing mode. Basically, it flings the, the rocks against a uh, type of an um, impact plate. But you, as you can see, it's also fairly large rocks, and it has a high uh, capacity and produces quite a lot of fines. Then a cone crusher is used in a secondary crushing uh, role. Um, you can also see it's got a fairly... Um, good reduction ratios and it's as i said it's in a uh, secondary application could also be used in a tertiary application and uh yeah i should mention that it's often uh remember i spoke earlier about um uh, interparticle crushing uh, the more you use interparticle crushing the finer it can go and you can see here uh, that a cone crusher uh, can go into interparticle crushing modes and there's a lot of innovation to get that right then you've got the vertical shaft impactors and once again it uses an impact uh, breakage force uh, the vertical shaft impactor is uh, for a for tertiary application basically just a smaller machine 
Then one of the more modern devices, I say modern, it was developed, started being developed in the 1980s, is a high pressure roll crusher. It was initially used in the diamond industry. It found application uh, in the um, uh, platinum uh, industry and even uh, sometimes in the iron ore industry. Um, it can have high capacities and its uh, feed size that can use a rule of thumb about it is that it's 5% of wheel diameter of the big rolls is what it, the size it can take. And the size of the product, because it's an interparticle crusher, I can tell you just that the uh, depends on how big the pressure is that you use, that, that is really the criteria of your maximum top size that you can use. And then um, the mineral sizer. Uh, is also a device that is sometimes used. It's almost used as a type of a shredding motion um, and has also found some application in industry in a couple of places. Now, in crusher design, uh, there has been advances throughout the ages. And I mean, some of them not very modern, but uh, still um, fairly um, useful, uh, useful to note is that the liners... For argument's sake, in 1880s, uh, Robert Hatfield uh, discovered the uh, Hatfield manganese st type of steel that basically work hardens as it works. So you can imagine, so the, hard, the more these uh, liners work and crush rock, the actual fact, the harder they get. And there have been a couple of other innovations like inserts, etc., that have happened to try and create a ribbed and a ripping motion. And uh, a lot of the crusher suppliers work a lot on the materials of construction of their liners in all the types of crushers uh, that there are. Then um, there's the auto tramp release. That has really almost got to do more with the hydraulic system. We've got an accumulator here, and it's basically just a bladder that's filled with... Um, uh, nitrogen and if the rock enters the chamber and it can't break it this bladder almost gives a bit of a give and it allows the rock to fall through without breaking uh, the liners or destroying them then also because you've got pumps and hydraulic systems here the the whole movement of the the the, the, the mantle up and down results in a smaller or larger uh, gap sitting than the bigger drives. This has been a consistent drive uh, throughout uh, industry, direct drive. Uh, the benefit of that is actual fact just that you can get uh, more energy directly into the uh, crusher. So there's a, a type of an efficiency there. And then the uh, sensors for choke finger. When I say type of efficiency, it's actually quite a big issue considering that these crushers can consume a large amounts of energy. Then um, the first types of crushers is, as we've discussed, is the uh, jaw crusher. And their main function really is to um, get material that can be transportable on a conveyor. There are two types, uh, the double toggle and the single toggle. Uh, the double toggle is, is, sorry, the single toggle is more the um, modern one. You can see it's got a type of a chewing motion here that it has. And that chewing motion allows it to have slightly larger capacities than the double toggle um, uh, type of um, jaw crusher. Then uh, the gyratory crusher, um, th these are the big crushers up front. Um, you've got a type of a gyratory motion, as you can see here. Um, it's also the crushers are often, as you can see, the, often these chambers at the top with the, that feed them are filled, and it results in a an interparticle crushing, which results in the particle-on-particle -particle breakage, which is fairly useful if you think it's material on material so uh, naturally it's going to save your liner um, uh, particles uh, quite a bit then um, the next uh, crusher to introduce is the cone crusher it's uh, they've been around since the 1920s and what a, it's similar but often the profiles of these um, uh, the, the the cone and the mantle is really what actually determines the um, the particle distribution or is, is more the efficiency of the different types of uh, cone crushers. They've also got the very similar hydraulic system to the other, uh, sorry, the gyratory crusher, you know, also able to do tramp release, uh, etc. Um, then the HPGR, as I've mentioned, it's a, uh, uh, so just let me move that, there you can see there's a, a picture of it in actual op operation, a real crusher, uh, 
HPGR. As I said, the particle size that can feed you as a rule of thumb is 5% of the wheel diameter. As you can see, the product can never be larger than um, the gap here uh, by, by nature. And uh, just as I mentioned, this was uh, first where it found application in the mining industry is actually in the diamond mining industry. And you can imagine they did not want to break uh, diamonds because they are exponentially worth more the larger they are and um, what happened here is that because it's material on material actual fact the material is actually squeezed past the diamond the heart done being strong and, and hard it doesn't experience impact so it, is, it was found to be a fantastic device to liberate the diamond without uh, the breakage but an HPGR has other benefits because it does interparticle, even in like the gold industry, it creates fissures uh, uh, that result, uh, can, can reach the gold uh, particle, the, the cyanide, to, to leach it out. But um, yeah, so the, this is a fairly new technology in the uh, minerals processing industry. Then uh, the hammer mill, uh, basically it's, it's a, a rocks come in here, it's basically a turning shaft and um, it flings the rocks against the, uh, 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 an impact plate and then it's got a grate here at the bottom that allows the particles when they've uh, passed a certain size uh, to, to pass through. Then you've got the other, the, the, the main difference between the um, uh, uh, previous one on the impact crushes is that basically you don't have a type of a swiveling uh, pivoted hammer it just is, is a, 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 a um, rotor that flings the material against an impact plate to break it then you've got a horizontal impact and basically often what they do is they have like chambers here that create uh, dead boxes that when the material is flung it's, it tends to be out to be rock on rock and it can give quite a large distribution of uh, particle sizes here is the mineral sizer and um, what it can uh, does is it literally grips the rock and almost shreds it and it it has an application uh, in many parts of of industry um just to yeah so it can also be uh, be used and as I've mentioned it's uh, something that's to be considered is all these crushes introduced here is subject to where you're using them flow sheet and your unique circumstance so it's really subject to a lot of uh, test work and liaison with uh, your various um, vendors so yeah and if you're interested you can go to my website uh, ndeme-inc.com it's where i've got um, plenty of uh, information and helpful resources to the various players in the industry and it's really the whole object is to allow you to meet your next ideal client or opportunity or job even if it is on the other side of the planet that is my aim uh, for my help to the industry thank you